grow rapidly and then it's going to move rapidly across the Gulf of Mexico heading for its landfall. Here's what it looks like right now. These are actually the Hurricane Hunter flying down into it. They just found a lower surface pressure, 979 millibars. The la the, the, the 4 a.m. update this morning, it had it at 985 millibars, so it had a 6 millibar drop and they just added that into the 7 o'clock update. Uh, they're still searching around for some higher wind speeds. I think they'll likely find them here as well once they get more down into there. So winds of 70 miles per hour is what we have for now. New England to the northwest at 9. You can see it's very symmetrical at this point. It is a growing storm. It is a strengthening storm. It really started to get its act together last night and will continue to grow and, and strengthen as it crosses the Gulf of Mexico, likely becoming a major hurricane. So this will be a rapid intensification process that we see with the storm. The water temperatures here are super warm. They are uh, record record warm out there in the southern Gulf. There's also good conditions in the upper levels for development. So this thing will just continue to strengthen and uh, as it makes landfall, it'll likely be a major hurricane. The landfall location has not changed. OK, so we still anticipate landfall in the Big Bend region of Florida. That's that Big Bend turn right there, somewhere between Apalachicola and over towards Cedar Key. That is the area that is likely to see it. To Tallahassee is just there, uh, just a little bit inland there. They will see some uh, likely devastating impacts from this storm. So this hasn't shifted west. If you woke up this morning worried about that, that hasn't happened. So it's not any closer to us. Um, it's going to work its way to the north and east going through the Gulf of Mexico. And look how large this storm is. It's going to get bigger and bigger as it moves its way through the Gulf of Mexico. So not only is it going to be strong, but it's going to be large. And a large hurricane can spread its issues farther and wider. Also, it's going to be picking up a ton of moisture over those very warm waters of the Gulf. And that's going to create a bunch of flooding rain all across the southeast. So there's the landfall. That's remember this is just one model. So remember it could be anywhere in this region that it could make landfall, but this one has it more of a towards Cedar Key. Once again, with very heavy, gusty winds and heavy rain, and then it moves inland. And I'm starting to show the inland uh, future cast because I want folks to understand that this will not just be a coastal problem. This is going to spread extremely heavy rain, flash flooding type of rain, far inland and I'm really worried for the folks in Atlanta uh, because they're going to get you know may, maybe as much as 10 inches of rain within just a couple of hours not not over a day or two within just a few hours and they got hills and mountains up there that funnels that that rainwater down into streams and drainage ditches and it's going to cause major issues and likely right during their morning commute on Friday. So I'm hoping that they're paying attention and folks maybe don't go into work early Friday morning, maybe wait later in the day. Uh, here's what it looks like with these winds. I mean, the watch these things pick up. But keep in mind, this is just one model and this model has it coming in around Steenhatchee instead of over here around, say, Apalachicola. So you could take these numbers, these triple digit numbers and kind of move them over this way. If it makes landfall over here, you could see these you know, these kind of winds in and around Tallahassee, St. Mark's, Quincy, uh, those areas. Uh, and obviously this is going to be devastating one way or the other. Uh, Dahlia came in the same spot last year, but this storm is um, from all the looks of it, it's, it's going to, it's certainly going to be larger than Adalia, but it's also likely to be stronger than Adalia. So they're going to see even more issues. So a lot of them are probably, folks are probably thinking, well, okay, Adalia was like this last year, but each storm is different. And even though this is coming into a similar area, it can cause different kinds of problems. Hurricane warning over there. We have a tropical storm warning offshore, but we do not anticipate tropical storm force winds on land in our area. The storm surge is going to be a major issue. They call this the Big Bend Regional Florida because it bends around and think of it almost like a catcher's mitt, catching all the storm surge as a storm works its way up the uh, west coast of Florida and the water has nowhere to go but up and in, and that's what it's going to do. Last year with Adalia, Cedar Key had a record storm surge of right around nine feet. 10 to 15 feet is the forecast for them this time. So it's going to be, you know, obviously a devastating blow all across that region. And then there's the rain, like I talked about. There's going to be flash flooding. And look, see these bright yellows in and around Atlanta? That's the 10 to 15 inch range. And so just imagine that in a few hours during the morning commute on Friday. That's why I'm hoping that folks, you know, they hopefully they'll put the schools off a little bit and that sort of thing, because that is going to cause major issues out on the roads uh, Friday for Atlanta. Back home, we're going to be doing good. We're going to be on, you know, the quote unquote good side of the storm with north winds. We're not going to see much rain out of the system, 
And the only thing we're really going to see is rip current. So we want to keep people out of the water. Uh, otherwise, you know, we just got a couple showers out there this morning, mainly in the panhandle. Uh, the, the rest of the area is pretty well clear. Our day planner shows a, a nice day, but a hot one near 90 degrees. We will have some showers later in the day. That's more from the cold front, not really from Helene. And same thing tomorrow, only some scattered showers. Now, if you're in Okaloosa or Santa Rosa County, you may get one of those rain bands working their way through but it'll be an outer band. It won't be one of the, the higher inner bands. And then if we look at the beach forecast. There's a high rip current risk uh, Thursday and Friday. We got to watch out for that. And we do have a storm tracker alert because of that high rip current risk. We want to keep folks out of the water. If we keep folks out of the water, we really won't have any problems here from this storm in our area. And then look at what happens. That front comes through. Our temperatures drop back off and it'll be much cooler. Looking really nice as we head into the weekend. So we've actually got Really nice weather for the next several days.